You promised it. You said it. I believe it. That's good enough for me. You know? You need to walk like that. You need to talk like that. Think like that. All right? Okay, so um, another way to stay in the press is buying ha by having determined purpose. Determined purpose must accompany being in the press in order to obtain. Luke 8, 43 through 45, perfect example of determined purpose. A pressing of a determined purpose was in the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'm going to be saved. I know I'm going to be healed. I know it. And then it says here that, and the woman who had suffered uh, a flow of blood for 12 years and had spent all her living on physicians could not be healed by anyone. So she came up behind Jesus into the press and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately the flow of her blood was seized. And Jesus said, look at this, this is really flipped out. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? <laughs> and, and Peter and the disciples looked at him like, are you for real? And they said, uh, you know, Master, look around. Look at the multitudes that are surrounding you and pressing in all around you on every side. How can you say, who touched me? Isn't it interesting? Everyone was pressing in, but only one received. Why? Why? You could press in and not receive, you know that? Because you're missing something. You're missing what she had, and that was determined purpose. Yeah. Okay? Satan hold my mule. Yeah. She had determined purpose. You know, mules are slow. That's why Satan hold my mule. Okay? Mules are real slow, and they're hard to get going, right? So you can get that. All right? Though many others were pressing in all around Jesus, only she received. Why? Because she had determined purpose. Determined purpose must accompany your press in order to obtain. Okay? Um, even that scripture, it says, my determined purpose is that I might know him. Hmm. Guess what? No one really comes to know the Lord until they have determined purpose. Wow. Huh. So you may want to get to know the Lord. You may want to get something from God, but you don't have determined purpose. You're not going to get it. Okay? Because that's part of the press. Because everyone else is pressing in around him, but only she got it. All right? These are nuggets that we need to catch. All right? So here's uh, some other things that will keep us into the press. Uh, stay encouraged. Don't expect others to encourage you. It's good if others come and encourage you. Praise God. And it's Holy Ghost. It's not flattery, you know. Uh, and it's anointed, and you know it's anointed, and you know it's God. You can, you can know in your spirit when it's real, you know. Uh, praise God when God sends people, but don't look for people to come and encourage you. Don't look for it. If it happens, praise God. You know, but don't look for it. Don't depend on it, all right? Uh, you have the paracletos on the inside of you, the encourager. Amen. David encouraged himself in the Lord, and he didn't have the Holy Spirit. How much more us who has the Holy Spirit, the paracletos, the encourager, right? All right? Uh, another way to stay in the press is to stay in pursuit mode. Stay in hot pursuit yeah. of what you're believing God for. Also, stay in the mode of confessing, decreeing of God's promises daily. Right? You will have whatsoever you say. Okay? Uh, decree a thing and it shall be established, the word says. Also by praying in the spirit a lot. Praying in tongues a lot. The last couple months, really, and it's getting more intense. I don't tell people this because it sounds like you're boasting, but when you're teaching and you're ministering, because God wants them to do that, you have to share those things. Okay? So I've been praying in tongues a lot, a lot, a lot. Man, have I been getting clarity on things I've not had clarity I've had things begin to pop inside of my spirit that I've not flowed in in a couple of years with renewal. You know what I mean? It's the, he'll, he'll never pick up where he left off. He'll always give you something. It's, it's renewed. It's, it's, it's different. It'll always be an addition, you know, fresher, brighter, stronger, you know. And so, um, you know, you have to stay in that place of decreeing and confessing and, um, and those things will come to pass. Uh, I'm sorry, by praying in spirit. The... Okay? By praying in the Spirit, you'll get the clarity, understanding, whatever else you have need of that you're lacking. Okay? Um, the other thing that you, uh, you need to will help you stay in the press is abandon faith with humility and surrender. 
right? Abandon faith. You know that if you don't believe, it won't happen. But in that believing, uh, you have to have a surrender. Because you don't, again, you don't know the timing. You don't know the how, the where, and the what, and who. You don't know any of that, you know. And so you have to surrender all that. You really do, you know. Um, all right, you stay in the press also by absorbing and drawing from God's presence, all right? Be still and know that I am God. You have to absorb. Not just in a corporate setting like we did tonight, but you have to do it. If you're just doing it here, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. You know, in my house, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but in my house, I don't allow the TV to come on until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I just don't like the sound of it in the atmosphere, because I don't want anything worldly dominating my atmosphere. I don't need the radio. I don't, even before I was saved, I hated the radio. Even before I was born again, I wasn't even, I wasn't even born again. And my spirit wasn't even renewed yet. I hated the radio. I just hated it. I still do. I don't like anything worldly filling my ears or atmosphere in my home. I don't, I don't like it. A lot of people that aren't saved, and some that are saved too, sadly, they don't like the silence. They can't handle it. My, I had a sister, my sister, she, she hated silence. She'd have the radio blasting, the TV blasting in the other room. You go upstairs, she's got something going on. It's like, oh my God. You know, but she, she couldn't handle the silence. But you see, when you don't know Jesus, you're not going to handle the silence. Because in the silence is torment. So they, they fuzz up their atmosphere to keep their minds out of the torment or whatever the enemy's trying to do. You know what I mean? But I like peace. I like quiet. When I first met my husband, he was into a heavy metal, you know? And he'd crank it up every time I'd come over. Like he was impressing me or something. I was saved. I led him to the Lord, by the way. And um, I was like, shut that off, you know? Why, man, it's so cool. No, it's not cool. Shut it off, you know. Yeah, but no, no, no. no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want, to me, it's garbage. To me, you know. And I wasn't interested in that. To me, it wasn't cool. You know, I, those years were behind me. You know, Went all the drug years and stuff. That also, that stuff was cool at one time. wasn't cool anymore. You know. And uh, so, uh, but after a while, you know, he liked things loud too. You know. And uh, it would disturb my peace. So it's like, no, no. Well, you could do that on your own. When I'm with you, no, 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 you know. We get in the car and he'd crank up the radio and he'd have it on some rock and roll. No. Boom, off. Not happening, you know. And um, so, you know, you have to guard your spirit, you know. Uh, the word says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. That word really translates in the Hebrew, your spirit, you know. And I was never one that was apologetic or shy to say anything. So if I, didn't want, if I don't want to hear those things, if I don't want to be around those things, I'm not here to offend you because I can leave too, all right? And so um, that's just where it's at, you know? And so you need to train also to, um, you know, how to download and stay in peace all the time, all right? All right, so let's see. Uh, where am I? Um... Oh, God's presence, stillness, quietness, right? Also, um, I'm coming to an end. All right, also, uh, by absorbing and enjoying God's presence, I already said that, by staying carefree of every concern or any worry, because uh, Jesus nailed all that to the cross, all right? And keep it nailed there, all right? Giving thanks uh, for what we're waiting and believing for, that's very important, all right? Uh, continually give thanks, be thankful for what you're not walking in yet, but what you're believing for, and God honors that. That will actually hasten it. It really does, okay, because God honors that. Also, uh, another way to stay in the press is by resisting every form of disappointment. Nip it in the bud when it comes. Don't receive it. Don't allow it to fester. Don't meditate on it, all right? 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, taking captive every thought and imagination and destroying every argument. I love that. Destroying every argument, because the devil will argue with you using circumstances and your feelings and your thoughts to argue the truth. To argue with the truth. Oh, but it's been two years. You've been believing six months. See, he's arguing. Those things are arguing with the truth. Yeah. Well, you know, you believed him one other time and it didn't happen. You know, and you have to, you have to nip those, I call them the tricks of the devil. 
You got to nip that stuff, man, right in the bud. As soon as it sprouts, nip it, toss it. All right? You got to stay on point all the time. You got to be sharp. You got to be keen. You got to be strong. We're the head, not the tail. Above and not beneath. Walk it. Okay? Stay in that place. All right? The word says that we're to be a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. To endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes you're going to come into hard places, hard times, hard warfare, hard disappointment, hard heartaches. You stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You just stand tall, stand strong in his strength. You know, For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know? When you train for that, you know, after a while, you'll just start, you know, riding in the high places of the Spirit. You really will. You know, you'll, you'll learn how to swing with Jesus, you know, in those hard places. You know, it's time to swing, Jesus, let's go. You know, when the going gets tough, I'm going to swing, baby. You know, okay, uh, also... Um, you learn how to stay in the press by importunity. Importunity. What's importunity? Well, remember with the widow with the unjust judge? And she came before him and he said, you know, will you uh, avenge me of my adversary? And he pff, ignored her. And she came back again and again and again and again and again. And he said, oh, give her what she wants. Because of her importunity, give her whatever she wants. You know? Importunity means shameless persistence. She had no quitting sense, man. She just kept coming and coming. She knew that that judge had the key to her whatever she needed, you know, with her adversary. And so we need to have the same, you know, attitude. Importunity. Shameless persistence. Also, a couple more. Uh, how do we stay in the press? Keeping your sense of humor. Okay. This is really funny. <laughs> this has nothing to do with uh, waiting on God for something, but this is really funny. I was under spiritual attack, all right, and what I had brought home some organic romaine lettuce, all right, <laughs> and while I was took the lettuce out of the fridge and I was making salad for me and my husband, this ugly little bug, <laughs> man, was it ugly hopped out of the lettuce onto my counter. And I was like, what the heck? i never seen anything like it. It was ugly. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, man, that's creepy. And I was ready to kill it. And before I killed it, this is really funny. Are you ready for this? This thing, like an elephant, all of a sudden grew out this little trunk, and it, went like, and it was in the shape. It got out of its face. This thing came out like the trunk of an elephant, and it went up. But you know what? The Holy Spirit, I started laughing. I was like, you little elephant thing, I'm going to kill you. You know? You little elephant thing, I'm going to kill you. you know? and, but you know what? It's funny. The Holy Spirit had those words come out of my mouth. Because the Holy Spirit wanted me to laugh. I was going through a season of warfare, and he used this ugly little elephant thing to jump out of my lettuce just to crack me up. Even though it was gross, you know, but it was, it was so funny looking. And this little elephant, ugly looking thing, like, it was like, oh, you're dead. <laughs> you are dead, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and that whole afternoon, I just laughed about it. It was like, you know, that thing was so gross and so ugly, but God wanted me to laugh at it. Cause, and he had him do this little act, you know, it was like, a little circus act for me, you know. It was hysterical. Yeah, I know. Oh, man, I cleaned that thing really good. <laughs> Each leaf I cleaned really good on both sides and patted dry, you know, <laughs> and inspected each one, you know. <laughs> then when he came home from work, I told him about the little elephant act, you know, that I experienced today. <laughs> it was funny. It was fun. I have to say it was funny, though, you know, gross but funny, you know. God will use anything to make you laugh, you know, in those seasons that are hard or dark, you know. So you have to keep your sense of humor, especially when you're walking through those dead, dry places, those valleys of the shadow of death, you know, where there's no sense of uh, life in what you're waiting uh, on God for, or just there's no sense of life because you're in warfare, okay? Uh, the other uh, way of staying in the press is worship, of course. God inhabits the praises of his people, which means he dwells inside. He'll show up in your worship, all right? And um, let's see. 
And again, in closing, I think in closing, yeah, I'm going to close. I think, yes, I'm going to close. Um, and the last thing in uh, staying in the press is uh, becoming a, a violent force. Okay, in the spirit realm. I don't mean smashing your lamps and, you know, breaking mirrors, yeah, right, or smashing little elegant bugs, bang, you know, you ugly thing, boom, you know, no, no, no. But it's, it's a spirit, it's an inward spirit um, posture that you take, you know, that you're taking, may I use this word? I'm not swearing. You're taking no crap from the devil, okay? Taking no crap from the devil. All right, so there's a violent posture that you take within yourself because uh, the kingdom of God suffers violent, violence, but the violent take it, take it by force. Yes. That's right. You're going to get that joy back. You're going to get that light back. You're going to get those revelations and those gifts back that's been dormant for a season because you're taking it back, baby, by force. You know? You're not being moved by anything that's coming your way from the enemy, from darkness at all. You, know? you have no quitting sense, you know? So now that you know how, that there is a press that we must enter into, and in order for your destiny to come to full manifestation, um, God's saying it's time, okay? There are spiritual membranes in the spirit realm that must be broken and pressed into by way of the spirit so that the birth and manifestation of your uncharted future of new things, miracles, and suddenlies will come forth and break forth as your destiny. Okay? The Holy Spirit is ever present. Always remember this. The Holy Spirit is ever present on the inside of you all the time to help you in the press, to stay in the press, to show you what kind of press in that season so that you'll enter into every season that God has for your, for your destiny. The now, the present, and the future. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want to pray for you, if you would. Why don't we stand? Okay? Because, you know, you're not going to have anything shared like this without the impartation. You know? See, I'm already walking in it. Okay. Is this my water, by the way? Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Are you playing a song first, you said? Oh, no. It's a, it's oh, 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 okay. I didn't know. If, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. Well, I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Wow. All these precious people. You know, I prayed that God would have here who he wanted tonight that we're ready for this next season, yes. that's ready for this fresh impartation of pressing in, of being aware of what's coming, even though you don't know what it is, and the things that you desire and you've not entered into as of yet, um, that is a part of your destiny, part of God's plan. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit brings all things to our remembrance. And I thank you that they'll not forget. They'll remember specifics that you highlighted for them tonight that they must apply, that they must remember, that they must walk in, that they must confess and believe, ponder, meditate on. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. You're taking them out of their dry season. You're bringing in them into the now and the new of your spirit. In Jesus' name, I release increase, revelation, understanding, and I thank you that a violent spirit, not one that does anything in the natural to destroy, but one that stays steady and strong, is fervent in you and the power of your might to destroy every onslaught of darkness that would come to kill, steal, and destroy. I thank you that they will have no quitting sense after this night. And I thank you, Father, that you are catapulting them into the new, that they've not experienced, they've not known, as of tonight, the shift, the change, the impartation is taking place in the mighty name of Jesus. And just say, Father, I receive all that you have for me. I will stay in the pursuit of the things that you have for me. 
I thank you I'll have no quitting sense. I thank you that today is a new day, a fresh start, a new beginning of all that you have for me and my destiny in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And I just want to wait one more minute because um, there's a couple things that the Lord's been telling me about a couple people. And one of them is Al. Um, Lord was telling me today, this afternoon, that, um, well, let me just back up and say this. I had come to a place in my walk a couple years ago where all I would have by listening to either a teaching or reading a book or something someone would share or something I would witness that someone was flowing in, whether it was a gift or something, <clears throat> by seeing or hearing, I would desire as well what they had, what they flowed in. Now, it's a, it's a godly thing, not the covet, you know, like you're jealous, coveting. It's not that. It's a godly thing that would come on me. So by way of desire, by observation and desire, I began to flow in those things. And the Lord said to me this afternoon, that's what's going to happen with you. You're going to begin to hear and see things that you don't flow in, that you want. And God's saying, the desire will bring it. It's going to start by you perceiving and seeing. Because there's so many things that you've been wanting that you don't flow in, that you realize you don't flow in. And he's saying, the time, the, the, shiftings, the shiftings come, where you're going to begin to see and hear and begin to want. And God's going to say, by way of desire, by observation or whatever, be, know that you're going to begin to flow in those areas as well. And he said, don't get discouraged, because at first it's going to be, you know, where Jesus said some 10, some 30, and some 60-fold. It's going to start off on a smaller scale, but it will gain momentum as you stay in that place of pursuit and hunger for those things. Okay? That's how it happened with me. I mean, I, I flowed in certain things to certain measures, but when I would see others flowing in a stronger force, God used that to kick up in me the desire so that I would begin to flow in that, okay? Iron sharpens iron, you see? All right? Amen. Okay, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Wow. There's the anointing right there. There's the anointing right there. That's it right there in Jesus' name. And I see you prophesying. God's saying, I'm taking the tape off your mouth. You've been silent for so long. I see you prophesying. You're going to step out of yourself, son, and you're going to begin to prophesy my words, says the Lord. Whoa. Fierce. Fierce. He's not going to be the mild-mannered reporter anymore. <laughs> He's going to step out of that phone booth, okay, with that cape. Hey, all right. <laughs> Praise God. Woo. Okay. Who else? Uh, okay. So I had someone else, but they're not here. Okay. But let's see what else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Um, Valerie and what's her husband's name? Jeff. Jeff. Valerie and Jeff. Come up. Come up. Yeah, come on down. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> You're the next contestant. <laughs> These are awesome people, by the way. Oh, yes. They're awesome, awesome, awesome. They're awesome. A gift to us. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, you know, the Lord would say that you do, you both have a nurturing spirit. Mm -hmm. And though you may not have the label, you do have pastor hearts. Okay. Definitely have pastoring hearts. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lot of people that God's going to bring in this place. He has already begun to bring them into your life, your sphere of influence. But he's going to bring people into your life that's going to need Jesus with skin on. And you are going to be those arms. You are going to be those words. You are going to be that counsel that they need. In fact, the Lord would say that I have given you the tongue of the learned, speaking a word in season to those that are weary and bound.
Your words will have healing. And he says, on your tongues is the law of kindness. That's why he's going to reward you and bless you with this new mantle. Amen. So just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to impart this to you. In the name of Jesus, I release right now. There it is. 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 Yes. 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 They're they're a mama and a papa. Oh yeah. Definitely a mama and a papa right there. Hallelujah. 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 I remember years ago they used to call um uh, the Goodmans down at Raymond. They were very, very famous. Yeah, Mom and Papa Goodman, yep. Yeah. And that's exactly how yeah. these two are. Yeah, Mom and Papa, are. yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That blonde there, you. Raise your hand. Yep, you. Come up. <laughs> oh, Nancy, okay. There she goes. <laughs> you wild thing, you. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you know, just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shoo. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's okay if you fall. Ura. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting it, though. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Rabba, Shata, Rabba, Sanda. Father, I thank you for her fierce spirit. Wow. You are strong. God made you that way. Mm. Wow, I see you tearing down strongholds. Oh, yeah, what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. What you do in secret, God will reward you openly. I see you tearing down strongholds, uprooting. What's that scripture, Judy? Tearing down and uprooting and rebuilding. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yeah. I see her tearing down, upbuilding and rebuilding. Rebuilding. Yes. In G I'll find that scripture and I'll give it to you. In, yeah, okay. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, I see you doing that in the spirit realm. Oh, you're an intercessor and you're a marked intercessor, but God's going to fine tune you and hone that gift. He's going to hone that ability. See, you, you're, you intercede here and you intercede there, but God's going to hone in 